This is the Computer Museum in Boston. There's no other place quite like it in the world. It's to computer buffs what the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown is to baseball fans. The whole history of computers is inside here. But today, the Computer Museum is doing something special. They're putting on the first ever Computer Bowl with a team of top computer celebrities from the Silicon Valley taking on a group of computer experts from the Route 128 area here in Boston to see who knows more about computers. Today, part one of the first ever Computer Bowl, the East against the West, on this special edition of the Computer Chronicles. Chronicles is made possible in part by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte Magazine, and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange. In print and online, Byte and Bix serve computer professionals worldwide with detailed information on new hardware, software, and technologies. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and with me this week is Esther Dyson. Esther, we're here in the auditorium of the Boston World Trade Center for the Computer Bowl to see how much you guys really do know about computers here as your East Coast team takes on David Bennell's West Coast team. The point of the Computer Bowl is really to raise money here for a Junior Bowl series of programs to help teach high school kids about computers. Uh, October happens to be, appropriately enough, Computer Learning Month. I was wondering how you think we're doing in this country at the high school level to teach our students about computers. Well, I think this is a sign we still need to do more, but it's starting to happen. Computers are turning up in schools. Teachers are learning how to use them. Uh, students are understanding they need them not just to study about computers, but to use computers. They're going to use them in college. They're going to use them in their jobs and maybe even at home. And things like this are helping, I think, to erase some of the enthusiasm that we need. Esther, good luck to you and your East Coast team. We're ready to start the Computer Bowl Part 1 in just a moment, so stay with us. On behalf of the Computer Museum, welcome to the world's first Computer Bowl. Thank you. My name is Chris Morgan. And you know, there's always been a friendly rivalry of sorts, sometimes not so friendly, between the computer people on the East Coast and the ones on the West Coast. But which group really has the sharpest computer experts? We'll try to answer that question today as we pit the East Coast against the West Coast in a high-tech showdown for the title of Computer Masters of the Universe. <laughs> now let's meet our panelists. They're some of the best-known people in the computer industry. For the West Coast, Dr. Adele Goldberg, President and CEO of Park Place Systems, specializing in object-oriented software development systems. Next we have Bill Joy, co-founder of Sun Microsystems, a Silicon Valley company making desktop workstations. Next, Casey Powell, President and CEO of Sequent Computers Incorporated, makers of multiprocessor mini computers. Then we have Alan Michaels, Chairman and CEO of Ardent Computer Company, developers and manufacturers of graphic supercomputers. Our captain for the West Coast team is David Bennell, Chairman and CEO of PCW Communications, publishers of PC World, Mac World, and other computer periodicals. And now the East Coast team, beginning with Esther Dyson, software expert and editor publisher of the computer newsletter, Release 1.0. Next, Mitchell Kapor, chairman of On Technology and founder of Lotus Development Corporation. David Hathaway, partner at Venrock Associates, a venture capital firm best known for their investments in Apple Computer and Intel. Bill Pedusco, chairman and CEO of Stellar Computer, developers of graphics super workstations for engineers and scientists. And our team captain for the East Coast is Dick Schaefer, editor publisher of the Technologic Computer Letter and former technology columnist for the Wall Street Journal.
Now it's my great pleasure to introduce the man who will be asking the questions tonight, someone who covers the high-tech field for a living. Please welcome our examiner, the editor and publisher of the San Francisco Examiner, William Hurst III. I'm ready, Will. Let's start right in. First, a little microcomputer history. Dick Heiser opened the world's first microcomputer store in West Los Angeles in 1975. For 10 points, was it called Computerland, the itty bitty computer company, or the computer store? West Coast, Vanel. The computer store. Yes. Hi. All right. Yeah. Okay, that's 10 to nothing for the west side. 10 point question. Who wrote the first book about personal computers in 1974? West Coast, Joy. Now, oh, Ted Hoff. Oh. <laughs> East Coast, K4. Yeah, um, Ted Nelson, uh, Computer Lib and Dream Machines. This is a 10-point question. How long would it take to send the Encyclopedia Britannica over a two gigabit fiber optic cable? <laughs> would it be two seconds, two minutes, or 20 minutes? East Coast, K4. Two seconds. What? Yeah. All right, this is a toss-up question. Hey, let's go. For 10 points, the letters in most software languages form acronyms. Which of the following two language names is not an acronym? Fortran or Ada? West Coast, Joy. Ada. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now we have a bonus round. For five points apiece, we'll name the people and you name the computer languages they invented. You can consult. Kenneth Iverson. APL. <laughs> this computer technology needs work here. <laughs> John why Backus. We, why can't we hear the West Coast cheer when we get these right? <laughs> <laughs> when, the, when the East Coast gets one right, we hear the East Coast cheer. <laughs> Fortran. <laughs> the answer is Fortran. Fortran is correct. <laughs> John McCarthy. Oh, Lisp. Yes. Nicholas Wirth. Pascal. Yeah. All right, this is an individual question. Either side may answer. What high tech company determined whether the 18.5 minute gap in the Nixon tape was deliberate? East Coast, K4. Bolt, Baranek, and Newman. Yes. Fast response, and now the score is the West team 55 points and the East Coast 30 points. Right. It's close, folks. It's close. All right, this is a toss-up question. Life is a well-known computer game. Of the following three people, who won Scientific American's Game of Life contest by creating the first glider gun? Was it Bill Gosper, Donald Knuth, or David All? East Coast, K4. Gosper. <laughs> okay, we're in the bonus round. <laughs> we're in the bonus round, and you can consult. We can? <laughs> At $1,000 a day. <laughs> Here's a four-part question, four, 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 four questions, actually, about computers in the movies. First, in what Disney movie do the main characters live inside a computer? Tron. Yes. <clears throat> what was the name of the robot in the film The Day the Earth Stood Still? Was it Robbie, Gort, or Brainiac? Robbie. <laughs> 
The correct answer was? Gort. What computer co-starred with Robert Redford in the film Three Days of the Condor? A PDP-11, an Apple II, or a Cray-1? PDP-11. Very good. Finally, what company worked with Disney to supply effects for the animated cartoon classic Fantasia? Was it IBM, Hewlett Packard, or Sperry Rand? Sperry. Wrong. Hewlett Packard is the correct answer. All right. Okay, everybody. <laughs> We're out of the bonus round. Back to a 10-point question. Either side may answer. What was the first name of the inventor of Boolean algebra? East Coast, Schaefer. George. George Gould is correct. Yes. Okay. It's the East Coast, 60. The West Coast, 55. <laughs> Dartmouth College is famous for many com computer firms. <laughs> Let him guess. Shall I complete it? Shall I complete it? Joy. Basic. Oh. 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 Sorry. Minus 10, Minus ten points. And I'm sorry, you interrupted us and you were incorrect, so we'll have to... We pose the question to the East? Yes, after we deduct 10 points from the West Coast score. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you have to be heartless sometimes at these <laughs> kinds of things. Dartmouth College is famous for many computer firsts. For 10 points, of the following three pioneering events, which did not take place at Dartmouth? <laughs> <laughs> A classic East Coast question. <laughs> <laughs> and here are the three. The first remote computer link-up, the first AI workshop, or the first color video terminal? East Coast, k -Pora. First color video terminal. Okay, we'll stop. We'll stop just for a second now to tell you that the score is the East Coast, 70. The West Coast, 45. We'll continue with a history question now. Many people believe that ENIAC was the first electronic digital computer, but a recent article in Scientific American claims this honor should really go to another computer pioneer. For 10 points, is this person Stibitz, Atanasoff, East Coast, at, 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 Atanasoff. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> <That's Zeus. laughs> I'm, I'm using... Very good. We're using polling logic here to uh, get the right answers. <laughs> For 10 points. The word, <laughs> the word modem is formed from what two words? East Coast, K-Por. Uh, modulator, demodulator. Yes. Right. Can we have now, a timeout? <laughs> the score. The score is the East Coast 90, the West Coast 45. And that's the signal for the end of the first round. Is there round. a difference in the altitude? <laughs> the computer bowl we're ready to start round two of this battle of computer wits and right now the east coast team is ahead let's go back to our examiner will hurst and our mc chris morgan all right let's go on now to round two will all right for 10 points what was the first home computer to sell a million units was it the apple II? the east coast k4 apple II. Oh. i'm sorry we'll have to deduct 10 points from the east coast okay. score and repeat the entire question for the West Coast. For 10 points, what was the first home computer to sell a million units? Was it the Apple II, the Commodore VIC-20, or the TRS-80? 
Commodore West Coast, Vic Spinelli. 20. Commodore Vic 20? That's correct. That was only 10 points? <laughs> <laughs> the Pizza Time restaurant chain was started by Atari founder Nolan Bushnell. West Coast, Powell. <laughs> Your answer, please. <laughs> well. <laughs> Give it a try, Casey. I don't, what the I don't get to confer on this one, huh? <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> yeah. Good guess. Uh, just so you'll know, Casey, the question was... <laughs> for 10 points, what was the name of Pizza Time's mouse robot? Thank you very much. <laughs> My children will be pleased to hear I got that right. <laughs> now we have a, a regular 10-point question. Either side may answer. For 10 points, is Rocky's Boots a program to teach children logic, a walking robot, or a PC bootstrap program? East Coast, Dyson. Teach children logic. Yes, that's correct. Now we have a toss-up question. I have a portable oh. gadget here to show you as part of this question. Portable. Okay, go ahead, Will. During World War II, the Allies used computers to decode secret messages written by the Nazis on machines like this. For 10 points, was this machine called the Ultra the ace or the en West Coast Joy. The Enigma. Right. The Bomb and Colossus are names of two computing devices developed during World War II. For ten points, were they used for designing the A bomb, for cryptography, or for designing a radar? Talk it over. Cryptography. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. This is not portable. <laughs> it weighs about 70 pounds. Let me just tuck it under here, and we'll continue. It's an individual question. Either side may answer. For 10 points, what was the first software company to go public on the New York Stock Exchange? East Coast, Schaefer. Cullen it. <laughs> Okay, it's close. It's the East Coast 100, the West Coast 95. For 10 points, which of the following did Bill Gates not do? <laughs> A, drop out of Harvard. B, program the PDP-10. Or C, have a thousand person 25th birthday party. East Coast, Kapoor. Have a thousand person 25th birthday party? Correct. <laughs> For 10 points, who co founded Microsoft along with Bill Gates? East Coast, K4. Paul Allen. Yes. For 10 points, are computers mentioned anywhere in George Orwell's 1984? East Coast, Cape Horn. No. Yeah. <laughs> In 1888, William Burroughs was granted a patent. For 10 points, was it for the printing adding machine, the difference engine, or the punched card? East Coast, Schaefer. Printing adding machine. That's correct. For 10 points, how far can electricity travel in a nanosecond? West Coast, Powell. One foot. We have a slightly different... Three quarters of a foot through physical media. We have a slightly different answer. Did you say three quarters of a three foot? Three quarters of a foot through physical media, one foot theoretically. All right. Averaging those two answers... <laughs> we'll talk to the judges, and the judge says, yes, we'll give it to you.
we had three choices, 1.8 inches, 10.8 inches, or 108 inches. All right, for 10 points, this is an individual question, either side may answer, is caduceus a high-level language, a data general computer, or a medical diagnosis? East Coast, system? K4. Med medical expert system. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Now, there's a bonus round coming up about famous computer books. But first, this 10-point toss-up question that gets you into the bonus round. What book about computers won the Pulitzer Prize? East Coast, Hathaway. Soul of New Machine. All right, in this bonus round, for five points apiece, you may consult. Tell us who wrote the following books. The Art of Computer Programming. Donald Knuth. Right. The Third Apple. John Wayne Gessé. John Wayne Gessé. <laughs> the Ninth Bridgewater Treatise. <laughs> May we have your answer, please? Knight and Bridgewater. What was the answer? Knight and Bridgewater. Oh. The answer was Charles Babbage. Oh. <laughs> okay, the score. The score is the East Coast 170 and the West Coast 105. <laughs> We're going to have to get on the stick, West Coast. <laughs> That's okay. All right, let's move along. For 10 points, either side may answer. A rectifier changes AC current to DC. What does an inverter do? East Coast, Pedesco. An inverter converts DC to AC. Right. Hey. For 10 points, Ivan Sutherland described the first interactive graphics program. For East Coast, K4. Sketchpad. <laughs> telephone call in the lobby for Mitch K4. <laughs> <laughs> the end of the round and the score is East Coast 190, West Coast 115. That's the first half of the computer bowl and at halftime the East Coast has the lead. We'll have the final rounds of the computer bowl. Be sure to join us right here next week on the Computer Chronicles. Access file this week, Compaq has finally introduced its long-awaited laptop computer. The machine is called the SLT-286. It features the 8286 chip running at 8 or 12 megahertz. It has a detachable keyboard. It weighs in at 14 pounds and runs on a nickel-cadmium battery pack with an estimated three hours of use per charge. The screen is a super twist LCD with a high resolution of 640 by 480 with eight shades of gray. The Compaq SLT-286 comes with one three-and-a-half-inch floppy and a 20 or 40 megabyte hard drive. The price begins at 5400. Compaq said it did not plan to bring out a 386 laptop until it could solve the problem of battery power. Existing 386 laptops only get about one hour of use for battery charge. Meanwhile, elsewhere on the laptop front, Grid unveiled its new 386 laptop. It comes with two IBM type expansion slots, base price $7,500. Sharp introduced a 286 laptop with VGA emulation and 16 levels of gray, price $5,600. And in Tokyo, the Seiko Epson company said it'll be coming out next year with the first color laptop featuring a screen that can display 4,000 colors. Seiko said the price will be $7,800. It will use the 286 chip. The reviews are slowly coming in on Steve Jobs' next computer, and they are mixed in general praise for a nice packaging of existing hardware technology, an excellent user interface for Unix, but concerns about the small potential market and whether or not there will be enough software support. Another concern was the lack of a traditional disk drive forcing developers to offer software on an expensive optical disk or via the Ethernet port. 
However, the next deal with IBM for use of the Next Step interface on IBM's Unix machines may motivate programmers to write for the next computer. The big question for most observers was, will the next be another Macintosh or another Lisa? Everex has introduced the most powerful PC ever using the new Intel 8386SX chip. It's called the STEP 386IS and it clocks in at 3.2 MIPS compared to 2.5 MIPS for the new Compaq Desk Pro 386. The Everex machine is priced at $3,300 compared to $3,800 for the Compaq. The Nixdorf Computer Company says it has developed a new computerized voting machine that represents the first new technology in voting machines since the machine was invented 100 years ago by Thomas Edison. The Nixdorf voting machine is a touchscreen terminal much like your bank's ATM machine. There are no punched cards, no printed ballots, and the voting machine can easily display information in any language. The Nixdorf voting machine also features pictures of the candidates on the CRT and the ability to easily enter write-in candidates. Finally, a team of computer researchers has set a record for factoring the largest number ever, a 100-digit number, and they did it without using a supercomputer. It took them a month, and they used some 400 regular computers to do the job. The 100-digit number was broken down into two prime factors, one 41 digits long and the other 60 digits long, and there actually may be some practical value in all this, since government cryptographers use supposedly unfactorable large prime numbers in developing code systems. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next time. I'm not sure how much this thing is worth in money, but I can tell you it will be worth a lot to the team that wins it. It's the Silver Cup, the coveted prize to the winning team at this computer bowl. The bowl is a contest between the computer gurus of the West Coast and the high-tech experts of the East Coast to see whether the denizens of the Silicon Valley or the brains of Route 128 know more about computers. Today, the conclusion of the computer bowl, East versus West, on this special edition of the Computer Chronicles. Chronicles is made possible in part by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte magazine, and VIX, the Byte Information Exchange. In print and online, Byte and VIX serve computer professionals worldwide with detailed information on new hardware, software, and technologies. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Schiffe, and with me this week is Esther Dyson. Esther, we're here again at the Boston World Trade Center Auditorium for part two of the Computer Bowl. Your team from the East Coast about to take on David Vanell's team from the West Coast. This is a big rivalry here between the West and the East. And I, I was wondering, is there really a difference in those computer cultures? What's the difference in a Silicon Valley type person and a Route 128 type person? Well, it's, it's very simple. It comes down to socks. <laughs> the guys on the West Coast don't wear any socks, and the guys on the East Coast wear white socks. Uh, aside from that, to get a little more serious, yeah. the the West Coast is very much PC-oriented and chip-oriented. The East Coast comes out of the mini-computer and mainframe culture, so they tend to be older and stater and, of course, much smarter, which is why we're going to win. <laughs> Esther, good luck to you and your East Coast team. I know you're eager to get back into the fray there. We're going to have part two, the grand finale of the Computer Bowl, in just a moment, so stay with us. As we begin the second half of the Computer Bowl, the East Coast team is ahead 180 to 115. The members of the East Coast team are Esther Dyson, editor-publisher of Release 1.0, Mitch Caper, chairman of On Technology and founder of Lotus, David Hathaway, partner of the venture capital firm Venrock Associates, investors in Apple and Intel, Bill Paduska, chairman and CEO of Stellar Computer, the captain of the East Coast team is Dick Schaefer, editor-publisher of the Technologic Computer Letter. The members of the West Coast team are Adele Goldberg, president and CEO of Park Place Systems, Bill Joy, co-founder of Sun Microsystems, Casey Powell, president and CEO of Sequent Computers, Alan Michaels, chairman and CEO of Ardent Computer Company, and the captain of the West Coast team is David Bennell, chairman and CEO of PCW Communications. The MC for the Computer Bowl is Chris Morgan. The questioner is Will Hurst, publisher of the San Francisco Examiner. All right, round three, Will? For 10 points, 
What is the most widely installed PC operating system? East Coast, Dyson. DOS. Correct. For 10, quest for 10 points, of the following three terms, which does not describe a type of microprocessor? CISC, RISC, or WISC? West Coast, Joy. WISC. Correct. Correct. Yes. For 10 points, at what trade show was VisiCalc first introduced? East Coast Schaefer. West Coast Computer Fair. Correct. Yeah. Okay, the score. The score is the East Coast 200, the West Coast 125. <laughs> this is a toss-up question leading to a bonus round. For your 10-point toss-up, what was the first computer John von Neumann used? The Mark I or the Pilot Ace? East Coast, Kapor. Mark I. Correct. <laughs> We're in a bonus round now, and you may consult to answer these questions. The round is about IBM. There are three parts worth five points each. Who wrote IBM's Billion Dollar Baby? Your Porsche Isaacson. Correct. That's correct. Right. How many horizontal lines make up the IBM logo on computer screens? It's 12, it's 12. Is it 8, 13, or both? <laughs> 13. Wrong. No. Both. There are two official versions. For 10 points, who raised $500 to start a company by selling a version of the Space War computer game? East Coast, Schaefer. Nolan Bushnell. That's correct. Right. For 10 points, was the US Festival rock concert sponsored by Stuart Brand? West Coast, Joy. Steve Wozniak. That's yes. correct. Now we have a toss-up question. Some say the personal computer era began when a microcomputer appeared on this, the January... West Coast, Powell. It was the uh, Mitz Altair. Wrong. Oh, oh okay. I, I take it back, that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> the, the complete question is, was that computer the inside, the Altair, the Skelby, or the Apple One? And the answer is the Altair. You're now in a bonus round. Three parts. You may consult. The bonus round is about computer magazines. <laughs> Fix. <laughs> I don't know much about that. Six months before the famous popular electronics cover, another computer appeared on a magazine cover. The computer was the Mark VIII. For 10 points, was the magazine Scientific American, EDN, or Radio Electronics? Radio Electronics. That's, That's correct. correct. All right. What microprocessor was used in the Mark 8? 8008. Wrong. The correct answer is the Intel 4004. A rumble goes up in the audience. <laughs> Finally, which, uh, which was the first computer magazine? Was it Computers and Automation, Datamation, or Computer World? Computers and Automation? That's, That's correct. correct. Yes. <laughs> for 10 points, what is the term for software permanently stored in ROM? East Coast, K4. <laughs> Sorry, your time's Oper up. Operating system. <laughs> no. <laughs> time's up. The West Coast, want to try that? Firmware. Okay. Firmware? Yeah.
What? Uh, firmware. 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 Uh -huh. Okay. Let's recap the score. It's the East Coast 235 and the West Coast 175. Coming back. All right. The gap, the gap is closing slowly. <laughs> For 10 points, is there a way to read a magnetic tape if you don't have a tape reader? Yes. West Coast, Goldberg. Yes. That's correct. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yes, by using a special magnetic powder or fluid. We have a toss-up question now. Are IBM's headquarters on Madison Avenue in Poughkeepsie or in Armonk? East Coast, Hathaway. Armonk. Armonk is correct. <laughs> Here's the bonus question. You may consult. We know of at least two high-level computer languages whose names read the same way backwards as forwards. For five points apiece, what are they? Ada. Audience, please keep quiet. Your answer, please. Ada. Ada is correct. Yes. C. C is correct. <laughs> a bit of a trick question. <laughs> what was the only personal computer to be named after the state in which it was produced. East Coast, Schaefer. Ohio Scientific. That's correct. <laughs> For 10 points, was the whetstone a measure of computing performance? West Coast, Joy. Computing performance. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. We'll repeat the entire question for the East Coast. For 10 points, was the whetstone a measure of computing performance developed in the USA, the UK, or France? Let's deduct 10 points on that. East, Cape War. UK. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> now we have a toss-up question about computer pioneer Alan Turing. Turing contributed to the design of one computer that was built. Was it ENIAC or the Pilot Ace? West Coast, Goldberg. ENIAC. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Oh. East Coast? <laughs> K4. Oh. Tough one. Tough question. <laughs> For five points, who received the Tony nomination for Best Actor for portraying Turing on Broadway this year? Was it Sir Lawrence Olivier, Ian McClellan, or Derek Jacoby? Dirk. And it's it's a bonus. Yes, it's the bonus round. Derek Jacoby. Dick, the answer is Derek Jacoby is correct. <laughs> what was the name of the play? The, the, breaking, breaking the Code. Breaking the Code? Breaking the Code yes. is correct. Okay, we'll finish up the bonus round, and that'll be the end of this round. Where did Turing do his research during his stay in the United States? Princeton? Princeton. Your Princeton. Princeton is correct. Yeah. Okay, and that's the end of this round with the score, the East Coast 290 and the West Coast 175. <laughs> Here at the Computer Bowl, we're ready for the final round now to see who is the master of computer trivia. And right now, the East Coast team is ahead. Let's go back to our examiner, Will Hurst, and our MC, Chris Morgan. Hands on buzzers, please. <laughs> APL is a high-level software language. For 10 points, what do the letters in APL stand East for? East Coast Dyson. A programming language. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> What arcade game started the computer arcade craze? West Coast, Powell. Pong. Pong correct. is correct. <laughs> what is the name of the government-funded computer network linking defense research? West Coast, Joy. ARPANET. ARPANET is correct. Yeah. 
Here's a toss-up question. For 10 points, what computer language uses turtles? East Coast, Kapor. Logo. Logo is correct. Yeah. You may consult. Here are three questions about CPM for five points apiece. <laughs> what does CPM stand for? Control Program Microcomputers. Control Program for Microcomputers. That is correct. <laughs> Who wrote it? Gary Kildall. Gary Kildall, correct. What company did he work for at the time? No, was it, was it before DI or was it? Your answer. No. Digital research. Digital research is correct. Okay, the score is East Coast 325, West Coast 195. For 10 points, what company did com Kentucky Fried Computers eventually become? West Coast, Spinel. North Star. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Kentucky Fried Computers? For 10 points, what was the name of Coleco's ill-fated home computer? East Coast, Kapor. Adam. Adam is correct. Here's another toss-up. The miniature circuits that make up today's computers are manufactured a so-called clean room to avoid contamination. Which is cleaner, a class 100 clean room or a class 10 clean room? West Coast, Joy. Class 10. 10 is correct. <laughs> now we have a bonus round with no redeeming social merit whatsoever. <laughs> you may consult. We'll name the street address, and for, pi and for five points each, Tell us what computer company is located at that address. <laughs> Number one, 590 Madison Avenue. IBM? That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> 1700 Green Hills Road. Uh, Data General. I'm sorry, that's oh. wrong. Correct answer is? Correct answer is Borland in Scotts Valley, California. Borland? Borland? Is that a computer company? <laughs> <laughs> Borland? And you're from the West Coast. <laughs> 20555 FM 149. What? Compact. Correct. That's correct. 100 Throckmorton. 100 Throckmorton. <laughs> uh, Kentucky Fried Computers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, the answer is? Correct answer is Tandy Radio Shack in Fort Worth. Yes. Next and last is 16011 Northeast 36th Way. Microsoft. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> Okay, the score is the East Coast 335 and the West Coast 230. This is an individual question. Either side may answer. For 10 points, in 1921, Carl Kopeck used the Czech word for worker in his play Ruhr. East Coast Dyson. Robot. Correct. Yeah. Is the largest employer in Silicon Valley the Air Force, Lockheed, or Apple Computer? West Coast, Joy. Lockheed. Lockheed is correct. <laughs> what about on Route 128? <laughs> Here's a toss-up. Prior to their use in computers, punch cards were used in which of the following machines? Silk weaving machines, calculators. West Coast, Michaels. Silk weaving. That's correct. I should, before we go into your bonus round, this is not a standard punch card, but we thought you'd like to see it. It has round holes in it. It's a Univac card. Go ahead, Will. This four <laughs> Thanks, Chris. This four-part bonus round is all about punched cards, like the one Chris is holding up. For five points, how many columns does an IBM standard computer punch card have? 
80. 80 is correct. correct. Yes. What shape are the holes in IBM? Computer readable punch cards. Rectangular. That's correct. Yeah. When punched cards first became popular in the 1890s, they had something in common with the dollar bill. What was it? Your answer, please. We must have your answer. They weren't worth very much. <laughs> Sorry, that's incorrect. That's not true. <laughs> They were, 10 points for that. <laughs> <laughs> they were the same size. The card was designed to use files built for storing dollars. Last, last bonus last question. What is the name used for the tiny round piece of paper created by punching paper tape? Is it pulp, chad, or fluff? Audience, please keep Chad. Going. Chad is correct. Chad is correct. Okay, the score is East Coast 345, West Coast 265. An individual question. Either side may answer. Dip switches are small switches found inside computers. For 10 points, does the P in dip stand for peripheral, package, or pixel? East Coast, K4. Package. Package is correct. <laughs> for 10 points, what is the S100? East Coast, K4. It's a computer bus. Correct. Yeah. Here's a technical toss-up question. For 10 points, is a picosecond shorter or longer than a nanosecond? West Coast Joy. Shorter. Shorter is correct. During the, this is the bonus round, and you may consult. During the 1960s and 1970s, the eight major computer companies were referred to jokingly as IBM and the Seven Dwarfs. For five points apiece, how many of the seven dwarfs can you name? You'll have a total of seven guesses. NCR, GE, RCA, uh, Control Data, Burroughs, Honeywell, and Sperry. That's absolutely right. <laughs> We've updated the scoreboard as 365 to 310. This is an individual question. Either side may answer. What is the more common name for the IEEE 802.3 standard? East Coast, K4. Ethernet. Correct. <laughs> All right, we're working on the scoreboard. All right. <laughs> for 10 points. In 1971, when RCA got out of the computer business, who bought their computer division? East West Coast, sorry, Michaels. I was, thought you were going to ask the buildings. Your answer, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who bought the... Must have an answer. GE. GE is not correct. Sorry, oh. incorrect. Oh. Okay, that's the end of the computer bowl. And the, the scores. Uh, however, yes. Now, now we have to we have to give the East Coast a chance to answer that question. And could we hear the question? Yes. Please? Would you repeat the question, please? For ten points. In 1971, when RCA got out of the computer business. Who bought their computer division? Was it... Okay, Bill Podesco. Honeywell. East. Uh, I'm sorry, that's, that's incorrect. That's not correct. He's going to be a trick. Very rare. Well, we have, a, we we have a bit of a dilemma since you interrupted the... Uh, <laughs> interrupted the, uh, the question, but... Uh, the correct answer is Univac, <laughs> division of Sperry Rand. Okay. The winners of the world's first computer bowl are the East Coast team. And I'd like to present the bowl now to the captain of the East Coast team, Dick Schaefer. Congratulations, Dick.
Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Cynthia Steele in the Random Access file this week. Ashton Tate has finally started shipping DBase. This is an updated version of the firm's DBase management software. The company says if you buy the DBase 4, you will receive a free copy of DBase 4, release 1.1. This will support the Ashton Tate Microsoft SQL Server database server. Sharp unveils a compact laptop clone, including the 16-level grayscale VGA display. This is no surprise since Compact uses the Sharp display. This new PC C5541 is battery powered based on the 80286 processor, which boasts a high speed 40 megabyte hard disk and 3.5 inch 1.44 megabyte floppy. The suggested retail price is $5,595. If you're interested, look for the machine at Comdex. The last holdout in the quest to make PostScript a printer language standard has given up. Hewlett Packard has finally licensed it from Adobe Systems. HP is expected to offer it in the future, but exact development plans have yet to be announced. At this point, over 25 computer equipment manufacturers have announced PostScript interpreter licensing agreements with Adobe Systems. Commodore is offering an 8 megabyte memory expansion and any hard disk drive controller for the Amiga 2000. This A2058 memory expansion at $799 for 2 megabytes can add up to 8 megabytes on a single card when fully populated with 1 megabyte chips. This additional memory will allow greater multitasking on the Amiga. Aldous has come down with a virus again, the second time in eight months. But this time the firm was prepared. By using a vaccine program and an isolation procedure, the virus found in beta versions of its newest freehand drawing program in recent weeks was eradicated. Still dozens of copies went out the door, which means it could come back to haunt the company's undated copies of the product. Speaking of viruses, Donald Gene Burleson, the first person ever convicted of using a computer virus to sabotage data, has been sentenced to seven years probation. He has also been ordered to pay back nearly $12,000 to his former employer. Burleson's attorney says his client will appeal the sentence, which was handed down by a district judge in Fort Worth, Texas. If you're a PC user and hate to balance your checkbook, you may be in luck. San Francisco's first interstate bank yesterday started a new service to allow PC users among its customers to balance their checkbook with floppy disk. The service will cost you $4.95 a month. Here's how it works. First Interstate sends you a monthly statement on a floppy disk. You can then put it into your PC to compare the bank's figures with your own. This way you can see in an instant which checks have cleared and which haven't. The latest news from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology in Virginia. Its new million-dollar computer is now safely housed in one of its computer labs. Last summer, the students won the supercomputer in a nationwide competition. The computer is capable of making 375 million calculations a second. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Cynthia Steele. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte magazine and VIX, the Byte Information Exchange. In print and online, Byte and VIX serve computer professionals worldwide with detailed information on new hardware, software, and technologies. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $4 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.